In this video, we're going to take a look at solving quadratic inequalities in one variable using algebra. And the first step that we need to do here is find the related equation. And that related equation is just this, but with an equal sign. Okay, so we're going to start with that. And for this first one, it's going to be x squared plus x minus 8. And that's going to be equal to negative 6. Then what we want to do is solve that particular equation. So to do that, the first thing I want to do is set it equal to 0. So I need to bring this 6 over. So I'll go plus 6, plus 6. Then bring this down, and we've got x squared plus x. And then minus 8 plus 6 would be minus 2 equals 0. OK, so to solve this quadratic, we can use any of the methods that we can use to solve quadratics, such as factoring, um, the quadratic formula, completing the square, all those different things um, to solve that. I like to look for factoring first because typically that's pretty straightforward if it works. So what we're looking for here is factors of negative 2 with a difference of 1. Well, yeah, I think there's those. 2 and 1 would have that. So this is going to factor into two things. First term is going to be x. That's how we get the x squared. And then I want to end up with a plus x, but that's minus, so I need to have plus minus. So plus and minus, and my factors were 2 and 1. I want to end up positive, so the 2's got to be positive, minus 1, and that's equal to 0. Okay. So again, remember that you can always FOIL that back, and you should get back to what you started with. So x squared minus x plus 2x, they would combine to be x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. OK, so we're good there. Then I want to set each of these equal to 0 to solve that. So x plus 2 equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0. And subtract 2 on both sides, so that would give us x equals negative 2. Add 1 on both sides, that's going to give us x equals 1. Now, we call these the critical values. And if we put them on a number line, it's going to break the number line up into three pieces. And that has to do with the shape of a parabola and what happens in the graph. If you solve these by graphing, you'll kind of see that three pieces in the parabola. But doing it algebraically, we can look at them on the number line and see the number line broken into three pieces. So negative 2 is going to be over here, and 1 is over here. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to pick a value in each of the sections that the number line is broken into. Okay. So what we see here is that we've got a section, negative 2 and less, going that way, so less than negative 2. We've got a section between negative 2 and 1, and then we've got a section greater than 1, those three pieces. So I'm just going to jot in my values that I'm going to test here. And so less than negative 2, let's use negative 3 over there. And between those two, well, we could use 0. And over here, we could use 2. Okay. So I'm going to take those values and fill them back into my original inequality and see what works. So start with the first one, negative 3. So it's going to be negative 3 squared, which would be 9, plus negative 3. So 9 plus negative 3 would be 6. 6 minus 8 is going to be negative 2 is less than or equal to negative 6. Is that true? Well, no. Negative 2 is greater than negative 6. So that doesn't work, OK? So let's try 0 in the middle there. So for this one, we would have 0 squared, which is 0, plus 0, still 0. Negative 8 is less than or equal to negative 6. Negative 8 is less than or equal to negative 6. Is that true? Yeah, that sure is true. OK? So then let's test the other side, the 2 over here. And to put that in, so we'd have 2 squared is 4, plus 2 is 6, minus 8 would be negative 2. Negative 2 is less than negative 6. Hey, we wrote that already. And that's what will happen if you choose a point that's just 1 into those. You'll get the same thing, typically. Um, and we look, negative 2 is still not less than or equal to negative 6. So it doesn't work there either. So that means this section doesn't work, this section doesn't work. 
what works is this middle piece. So we need to write an inequality that represents that middle piece. And that inequality would be negative 2. And we look back to our original inequality. And it's less than or equal to. So we use the less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1. Okay, So that's that chunk of the number line from here to here that works. Okay, That contains values that are going to work in this inequality. Okay, So let's try this next one over here. See if we can maybe figure out a little shortcut. For this one, again, the same story. I start by writing the related equation. So it's x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 9. Okay, so I got to set it equal to 0, so bring that 9 over, minus 9. Then we have x squared plus 10x is, and then we've got uh, 25 minus 9 would be plus 16 is equal to 0. Okay, then we need to solve this. In this case, I, I like to start with factoring again, so factors of 16 that add up to 10, 8 and 2. So this breaks up into x plus 8 and x plus 2. That's still equal to 0. Then remember, we set each of those pieces equal to 0, the zero product property. So x plus 8 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. Then solve each of those, subtract 8, so we'd have x equals negative 8, and subtract 2, so we have x equals negative 2. Okay? Now, that again divides our number line up into three pieces. So I'm just going to sketch those on the number line here so we can see what's going on. So we have negative 8 over here, we have negative 2 over here, and there's my three pieces. Less than negative 8, between negative 8 and negative 2, and greater than negative 2. Okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and choose some values that fall in each of those sections. So let's see. How about. Let's go with um, less than negative 8. Well, how about negative 9? I'm going to change colors here quick so you can see that jumping out. Okay, so negative 9 I'm going to take over here. Then between negative 8 and negative 2, well, I could choose anything. I could choose negative 7, negative 6, all the way up. Uh, let's do negative 3 because that's the smallest one that would fit in there nicely. And then over here, something bigger than negative 2, well, Zero is pretty nice to work with, so I'll choose that. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and fill those into my original inequality. So negative 9 first. So negative 9 squared is going to be 81. <coughs> then plus 10 times negative 9 would be negative 90. So 81 minus 90 would be negative 9. Negative 9 plus 25, well, that's going to be... 16. 16 is greater than 9. So what we have, 16 is greater than 9. Is that true? Yeah, it sure is. Okay, so let's try that middle section, negative 3. So negative 3 squared would be 9, plus 10 times negative 3 would be minus 30. So 9 minus 30 is going to be negative 21. Negative 21 plus 25 is going to give me 4. 4 is greater than 9. Hmm. Is that true? Not so much. Okay. Then let's go over here and try the 0. So 0 squared is 0 plus 10 times 0 is 0. That's all 0. 25 is greater than 9. Is that true? Sure is. Okay. So what works? Well, this piece works and this piece works. So we want to write an inequality that shows that it's going to be x and notice what our original symbol was here it doesn't have the equal to so we don't want the equal to it's going to be x is less than negative 8 that's this section of the number line so open circle there going this way and then we've got this piece open circle here going that way not a very good open circle I can do better than that okay so open circle there headed that way okay and that piece would be x is greater than negative 2. And remember, when we've got the two separate pieces like that, 
that's an or situation that holds them together because we can't have something that fits in both places it's going to be this one or this one okay so there's our solution and we tried points so we know that those are the values that work okay now let me give you a little shortcut here we did a little bit more work than we needed to in terms of checking these we can speed up the process a little bit after we find the critical points right here and put those on the number line if we just check the middle then we'll know what the things are that work because it's always going to be either the middle works or the two outside pieces work it's never going to be any other combination other than that and even in a really really crazy I shouldn't say never but um, even in a really crazy situation you're not going to have like these two pieces working okay so solving quadratic inequalities using algebra first find the related equation find, solve it to get the critical points graph those on a number line pick points that fall in each section test them see what works write inequalities to represent those pieces hope this was helpful keep working hard on your math